Welcome to the airbag replacement episode on the 89 Garage. So if you've been following my other videos, I've been fixing this wrecked escape and well, finally all the airbag stuff came uh, two weeks later, finally got the last piece of the puzzle. Let me just show you my mistake that I made. I, I did mention this in a video in one of my videos that I did make a mistake myself. Well, I guess I didn't realize that there was a difference or there even was a version, I guess, that's what I'm getting at, that there was a version that did not have curtain airbags uh, on these escapes. Well, I found out the hard way that, well, there is two different versions. Let me show you. So, if you look on this, that is without curtain airbags, that is with curtain. Now, all of them that I've seen that are without have that D there and all, all of the modules I've seen that have with curtain are C. So you can just uh, probably match that letter is what I'm guessing. You may also be asking yourself, do I really have curtain airbags? The way to know that you do is if you look above this, the pillar here, you will see an airbag tag right there. Uh, tonight, is going to be just replacing the module. I'm gonna do the rest of it in some other, when I have free time, I guess. Um, got kind of a little bit of a sore throat today. <clears throat> so I'm sorry that my voice is maybe cracking a little bit. But I will, this module may, I might be able to get it in without taking apart the center console. I'm gonna try that first. If not, the whole center console's gotta come out. I need a seven millimeter socket. I need a 10 millimeter. And then we also need to disconnect the battery. And I'm gonna jump, put a jumper across the, the uh, positive and negative. You don't want to work on the airbag system with the battery hooked up. Absolutely do not do that. Uh, the slightest little charge will explode it. You don't want that. All right. So there we are. I'm just there's the jumper. I, this is my jumpers are a two conductor, so I figure might as well just hook them both up. And again, all we're doing is discharging the system there. It's probably already discharged, but I'm gonna leave it hooked like that until I'm done. The module actually sits up back in here. So I'm gonna remove these. They are these are seven millimeter. This is the part that can get tricky. And removing this panel here. Oh, we got some kind of a. I'm going to remove that screw. I don't know if you can see that. I guess I could make it better. There you go. Got to remove this too. I didn't know that was there. That's all I can see. But there are a couple clips that hold this in here too. That can get tricky. We'll see what we come up with. Okay, she came right out. All I did was take this stuff off up there and the knees just pull straight back as you can tell they just kind of 
push on to the metal bracket right there. And there's our module. So I need to do the same thing on the passenger side. Um, there is, I believe, one bolt on this side and two that will be on the other side. Now you want to note, well, you see there's an arrow that says forward right there. You want to obviously make sure that that's facing the front. Okay, now this is the passenger side. I took those two screws out, but I don't know if it's going to that did much for me other than allow me to pull this carpet back a little bit more but there it is there's our two bolts we need to get out these are 10 millimeter and then we'll get in on the other side all right now we're back over here to unplug this top one i'm gonna just show you that just goes like so and that should come right out this one here that one might be tricky I already got the other two bolts out on the other side I'm gonna have to put the phone down, sorry. All right, finally got this stupid thing out of here. So, C and C. And then here's our harnesses. Plug those back in, we'll get her back together. So I basically just pulled the carpet back and let the gas pedal there hold it out of the road but uh, you gotta line these up here and get your bolt going back in Okay, both those are started. Tight. And tight. Okay, this side's easier to put together because, uh, well, that's all you do there. That's all you do there. I'm just gonna make double sure that this last of the three. Oh yeah, she's tight. Okay. She's in there. Just uh I would just push those in and then the little plastic screw. Then you just push you just go ahead and just push that straight in. Alright, 
modules are placed. So I think I'm gonna have enough time to hurry and throw this. Uh, this is the this is the passenger side airbag. I think I'm gonna have enough time to throw this in. So it's just those four bolts that go in those. Uh, I I'm holding things awkwardly here, so I can't really point at them for you, but you get the picture. And here's the connector. I do believe some of the older escapes have a different connector than the 05 through 07, just so you know. Back in, so to get this out, you gotta push these tabs down like so. here and you will be able to see what I'm talking about. Yep, bolt there, there, there. I have a napkin or two. Well, we don't have the right connector on our airbag. No sorry. Here I am next day. Just got back from the wrecking yard. And I just wanted to show you kind of uh, the difference. So, the 05 through 07 gas motors have this gray, and I actually think the other side of the connector might be brown that's in the car. But, so we got that. This is just my own findings from looking in the wrecking yard because I looked at about 10 of them, and this held true. sakes okay as you can see this says it came from an 05 escape well it came from a hybrid and all the 01 through 04 gas hybrid whatever has that plug uh, got it zoomed in it has that plug it's only two wires and it appears that Ford went ahead and kept using this on the 05 through 07 hybrids. So, anyway, I don't know why. I just know they did. So it turns out it looks like uh, when I was pulling that out, I didn't realize this, but I, I broke these <clears throat> three. I guess when I was pushing on it, I probably broke those free. They're, they're made to break free because this flap flies up when the airbag comes out. And it has these tabs in there that will hold it. I don't know if you can see that. These tabs right here, right here, will hold it right over this lip. So, We'll see what happens there. I, it's a little pretty dang delicate because I didn't pull on it that hard. I got two of these bolts out anyway. And then I got, there's two more. There's one that's right above this wiring harness. Oh, I'm getting in here to, right there. There's another one. There's one there. All right, I got the stupid thing in there. For some reason, it just doesn't look right to me, but I'm going to have to fidget with it later. It, it has an airbag again, but uh, I don't know if the other car, the other Escape I got this out of, had a slightly jacked up dash or something, but I don't know. It's just like that doesn't want to go in all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and move along here to this driver's side. <clears throat> 
when the car got back from the wreck, there was a piece of plastic that's sitting up there somewhere. I'd had no idea where it came from, but now, now that I'm under here, I can see that it came from here. And I can't really pull these. There's three plugs, I believe, up here. I need to get pulled out. And I really can't do that and hold the phone at the same time. So I'll be back. All right. Okay, so I got that, that, and this one unplugged. I think this might be the horn, maybe. I think these are maybe the crews. That's the airbag but anyway now the last thing we do is uh this is a pretty long-winded bugger right here that's a seven millimeter and you just kind of lay on it with your uh quarter inch impact or whatever you got i suggest you use power tool here all right so when you undo slowly this thing is just pop itself off looks like I got a little ways to go yet all right I think that's out now okay then she just slides right off of there so now I gotta take this in and that's what this looks like right, right now but I gotta take this in and <clears throat> assemble the airbag and the steering wheel we're going to start by removing those four got that cover off setting it up there <clears throat> like my workbench now these here I believe yes they are 10 millimeters so I'm going to knock this frame part off be right back frame is off now we need to remove those two screws uh, this, this wire here needs to come out and this wire needs to come out and those Those would pop down more. Let me get a screwdriver. So as you can see, <clears throat> sole purpose of this screw is just to hold these switches on. And then that all comes off as an assembly. Put that aside because I actually do the steering wheel I bought did not come with that. Actually, I'm done with this now. New air or new steering wheel is right here. And there's our new airbag. Ah, oh, garbage. <clears throat> I gotta take this off one second got the buttons back on the wiring all done up so one thing <clears throat> this had some kind of a I don't know if there's another type of steering wheel or something that I've never seen another steering wheel but it had a bracket that had a screw hole here and also right here I just got my tin snips and knocked it off there because well, I don't need it, and it was in the road. So now I can throw. See this? This does not have that other piece. All the plugs match and everything, though, so I think we're good. All right, now we're sticking this back on, and you just want to be sure you're not pinching any of these wires when you put this back on because that's just going to cause you all kinds of problems you know 
I'm gonna go ahead and put these back on. Okay, so all four of those are back on. Now it's time for the El Covero. She's ready to go back on. So let's run out there. One thing I should have mentioned is you don't want to mess around with your clock spring here. And also, if you get this off, your steering wheel is going to sit off. So do this with the steering wheel straight forward, you know, where, where it normally sits going down the road. Make your wheel straight is basically what I'm getting at. Because uh, if you're slightly turned and then you put the wheel on straight, you're going to have to pull the thing back off and reclock it. So... It's not the hardest steering wheel in the world. It's probably the easiest steering wheel I've ever messed with that was factory. But, just so you know. One other thing I discovered is that one does not have to get undone because that just connects inside the steering wheel. It must connect with through one of these other two. But, uh, just so you know. Then you go gray to gray, and then the white one goes in the bottom of this. So we're all the way back to this point here. It just, when you slide the steering wheel on, it kind of makes a little pop. So when it goes on, you'll just kind of hear a little pop. And uh, she's ready to tighten that screw. That should suck in. Just gotta put the cover on and we'll be good. This here's our cover. Okay, it's back on. Well, it's got an airbag now. I have not even turned the key forward or anything like that. Let's see if the, I hope that the damn light turns off now. clear that it's not on solid it's giving me some kind of code there I probably ought to pay attention to it one two three one two three four thirty four Give me code 34. All right, so back on here with foreskin. Yep. All right, so I had two codes. One was battery voltage too low. After I started and ran it for a minute, I ran the diagnostic test again that one cleared but now i've got seat belt pretensioner fault so my airbags are showing up okay uh, those are gone now this one here is one that i did not get before i'm a little bit puzzled so it is the next day i didn't get out and mess around with the escape too much last night because shortly after I ended the video last night, it started snowing pretty good. It's kind of interesting because I'm only, I don't know, about two, three miles from home and I don't see any, hardly any snow anyway. There's a light skiff. Anyways, I am on my way back to the wrecking yard because uh, when I went after those codes yesterday, 
uh, after after putting the airbag module and the airbags back in, we still had that code uh, B2282, uh, I believe. Well, that's uh, that's for the seat belt pretensioners. What that is, and I'll be honest with you, until last night I didn't know this. But what that is is where you buckle your seat belt into so the part that's attached to the seat that has some kind of deal that uh, suck in or something uh, if you I'll show you when I get back home uh, to the escape but you can see it's got kind of an accordion type cover on it and you can see that's kind of collapsed because it's sucked in I didn't even know that was a thing I you know I, I thought I was fairly <laughs> well versed in some of this stuff but uh, that's, a, that's a new one for me had to make a pit stop on the way here but finally at the wrecking yard making my way out to the blue ovals found my donor here you may I don't know how much I got of this but this is the escape that I pulled the radiator and the air AC condenser from so this is an 06 just match the part numbers on the seats the seat belt pieces they are one and the same I would like to take more stuff out of this but it's tan interior this actually is in fairly decent shape it doesn't smell all that well but uh, in pretty good shape so I will be pulling these out of here and to do so we got a couple bolts there I believe those are 15s and a couple more on the back the seat pretty much has to come out to get to this it's just not something you I guess you could maybe get to it if the center console was out of there but it's a lot quicker to just pull the seats Right. Indeed, those were 15s uh, on the, and then on the back, it's got, uh, oh, I'll show you. On the back, there's D's nuts back there. And then, uh, well, I think the next step is so I can tip this over. And I think to accomplish that, I gotta do that. And then maybe, maybe we can get this seat out of here or tip it over where I can get to it, we'll see. So, uh, if you're going and doing pulling this yourself, be sure to bring yourself a, a T20. I brought that set with me because I know Ford likes to throw you torques here and again. And that actually looks like that's the only thing holding this on. And I believe all else we need to do is unplug some stuff and, well, there's another Torx. That's neat. Glad I brought this. Hopefully I got one big enough in there. Let's see. Bigger. Maybe. Maybe this one. I think that's it. T55. Okay. It is out. And as you can see, it's got those cables in it somehow. It sucks these cables in or something when you get in an accident. Um, and I'll show you when I get back on the escape we're fixing that this here is collapsed. I don't know, probably an inch or so, I'd guess. Half inch. But this one's out. This is the whole piece here. I also suggest that just in case you find something's happening in that harness, you cut yourself some wires so you can splice them in with the harness if you need to. And I'm ready to go to the other side. I'm just gonna pretend that's hot chocolate. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna go with hot chocolate. Oh, maybe a, maybe another chocolate novelty item. All right, and just to show you the difference between one that is used and not used the left one like i was saying earlier in the video it's like the accordion type i don't know what you want to call it 
accordion type deal it's uh, been collapsed with that cable in the end and the one on the right is the one I got from the wrecking yard back in the car both pretensioners have been replaced just took the battery up let's hope the stupid light goes away ah come on go away Nice. No codes. Feel the power. So all that airbag video that you just watched actually all was recorded about a month ago. We've had, uh, I've had a lot of things going on. I have a lot of stuff filmed that I'm just behind on. And I realized just right now, as I'm putting this video together, that I never did a closing to the video. So, here it is. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. Um, I apologize. Uh, I was in a hurry. It was uh, close to my anniversary when this was filmed. And I needed to leave town, so I really didn't film the install of the seatbelt pretensioners on this escape. So I apologize for that. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you saw the way I disassembled it in the wrecking yard, you should be able to figure it out. Just easy peasy. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Please subscribe and hit that uh, bell up in the corner, you will receive notifications as soon as I post a video. Like you would have known right when I posted this video had you clicked that already. If you have clicked it already, then you know. Yeah, you know. All right. Take care. Ta-ta. Oh,